Good morning. Welcome to a joint worship service between Community United Methodist Church and Open Table of Christ United Methodist Church. I greet all of you who are here in the sanctuary and all of those who are joining us online. I'm Pastor Rebecca Cho, pastor of this church, Community UMC. Well, greetings again. My name is Sun Min. I'm the pastor of Open Table of Christ United Methodist Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please join me in the call to worship, and please rise if you feel comfortable. Lead us in the way of truth, O God. Show us your holy pathways. Your ways steadfast, love, and faithfulness. Teach us to follow where you lead. We trust in your way, O Lord. Let us come along, Jesus tempted in the desert.
please join with me now in the prayer of confession. We long to be known by you at our best, Holy One. We long to hear the words, you are my beloved child. With you I am well pleased. Yet we remember times when our words or actions have hurt your heart or the hearts of others. For these acts, forgive us, we pray. We remember, too, when we have caused harm by failing to act or by failing to speak. For these inactions, forgive us, we pray. Now hear these words of assurance. Our God renews and restores us in loving kindness. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are, you are forgiven. Amen. I invite Pastor Sunman to deliver this morning's children's message. So I guess that is my children can come <laughs> and say. Good morning, back there, how are you? And good morning. How are you everybody? Warm, cozy? You know, I feel like I'm a little bit chilly. So you know what, I'm glad I brought uh, my shirt, button down shirt. Looks good? Do I look good? Yes? yes? No? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing is wrong. Maybe you need glasses. Anything wrong? What's happening? Oh, what's happening here? There's one button left. How did it happen? There's an extra button up there? Serious? Oh, I can feel it. I did it wrong? You know what? Help me out. Let me just undo the button. Oh, you know what? I see what happened. When I put the first button wrong, not in here, when I put the first button here in the second hole, and then I just didn't even look, and I just followed the rest. And that's how it happened, right? So when you do these buttons, what's important is put the first button right. Do the first button right. If you do the first button right, you don't even need to look. All the buttons, I'm not looking any of these buttons and you can just do them right. So first thing is very important. So doing the first thing right is very important. And we can apply the same logic and reasoning to our church life or spiritual life. What would be the first and important thing that we have to do, especially this time of Lent? What could that be? Could that be a little prayer every morning when we get up? Even before we get up, we can just close your eyes and talk to God. Lord, we thank you for this new day. Lord, we thank you for my family. Lord, we thank you for this church. There are a lot of things to do, 
but talking to God and appreciating what we have will be the first thing. And we will trust God that God will take care of us. Doing the first thing right is very important. Let's say a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are always with us. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our family in Christ. In your name, amen. This morning's scripture lesson comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we just heard Mark's version of this, the story of Jesus' baptism and his time of 40 days in the wilderness. Um, in the other versions, Matthew and, and Luke add a little bit more to Mark's version and, and tell us about those specific temptations that he experienced. But here in Mark, we hear about how he was first baptized by John the Baptist and how God's spirit descended on him like a dove and a voice from heaven said, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. So before Jesus' experience of being driven out into the wilderness, the first thing that happened to him was these words of encouragement, these words that reminded him that he was God's son, that he was the second person in the Trinity, reminding him of that relationship and reminding him of how much God loved him and was pleased with him. As he then spent the next 40 days alone in the wilderness with only wild beasts, with no distractions and also no physical comforts, I imagine that he might have clung to those words that he heard at the time of his baptism. I imagine that those words and that that experience really helped to sustain him for those 40 days. Jesus went through uh, such an extreme time in the wilderness. So Matthew and Luke um, add to this version that that he fasted throughout this time. Um, 40 days of continuous fasting with with only water. We have to imagine he did drink water. Um, But 40 days of continuous fasting is something that not very many people will ever attempt. In fact, it's quite a dangerous thing to to do. And those rare few people who attempt such a thing um, should be monitored very closely by a doctor. Even if you can imagine a water-only fast of half that time, 20 days, would be very difficult and dangerous. And even a quarter of that time would also be uh, difficult and possibly dangerous. Over the past couple of years, I've been very interested in fasting and curious about it. And I've tried to watch some documentaries about it and uh, read some different articles. And, um, and also attempt some very moderate um, kind of fasting. But I've been curious about 
um, how fasting is used for religious purposes as well as for health or weight loss purposes. Uh, when, when I've experimented with, um, with fasting, as I said, it's been a very moderate version and, and uh, more of, um, you know, just a limited fast of maybe uh, limiting the hours in which I eat, so what they call intermittent fasting or timed feeding. Uh, what I find when I try to do something like that is that it helps me to start to, to cultivate more. Uh, one of the fruits of the spirit that I think is very hard to cultivate, which is self-control. Uh, so that's, that's something that uh, that kind of moderate fasting um, can, can help me with, to be more conscious of what I'm eating, when I'm eating, and, and just to kind of develop more self-control. So recently, I had the chance to attend a, a two-day online workshop that was held by Westpath, which is the insurance company for um, United Methodist Clergy. And the theme of that was all about five dimensions of well-being. The idea was to encourage pastors to be thinking about their overall well-being. Um, the five dimensions include physical, spiritual, financial, emotional, and social. And I found the, it was, it was a, a good uh, workshop. I enjoyed a lot of the sessions. Uh, I especially enjoyed the ones that focused on the spiritual side because we got to hear a couple of good sermons. And it's nice, especially as a pastor, to hear some, someone else talking other than me. And um, I also, I liked the part that talked about um, planning for your retirement and talking about different retirement plans. That was interesting. Um, the clergy tax session, not, not that interesting to me, but you know, good information nonetheless. But when I came out of that workshop, I thought it was just good to be kind of refreshed and reminded of how I should take care of all of the different parts of myself. And so I wanted to share that with you as well. So for that reason, I want to focus on those five dimensions during Lent, up um, before Palm Sunday, the five Sundays before Palm Sunday. So this Sunday, I'm going to focus on the physical dimension. And then uh, Pastor Sunman will focus on spiritual well-being next Sunday. And then we'll move on. Um, I'll, we're going to be separating. So I'll be preaching on the financial, emotional, and social well-being the, the following Sundays. I thought we can use this kind of reminder at any time in our lives, but especially during this pandemic when it's been really hard on, uh, on people in so many different ways, it's probably good for us to have uh, some reminders about taking care of ourselves and about our overall well-being. So going back to Jesus um, in his time in the wilderness, this time when he was fasting and, and praying, spending a lot of time in self-reflection and talking to God, it was for him a time of preparation. Before Jesus' public ministry, we imagine that Jesus lived a, a normal life for about 30 years, uh, but at some point in his life, he must have started to understand who he was and started to understand that there would be a time for him to have to go out into the world to teach, to preach, to demonstrate that he had God's power through the miracles that he performed. He must have realized that that time, once he started that public ministry, was not going to be an easy one. And then at some point, he also understood that his earthly life would not be a long one after that, as we know that he then lived only about three years after this. So I'm sure that his whole life helped to prepare him for that moment, that, that time when he really started going out and gathering his disciples and preaching. But these 40 days were especially important days to help prepare him for that time. He was isolated from everyone and everything, 
just alone with God, alone with his own thoughts, and with the wild animals and the elements of nature, completely dependent on God and on these angels that we hear came and waited on him. When we celebrate Lent, we spend 40 days preparing for Easter, remembering those 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness. These 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter, um, if you count the days, you'll see that Sundays are never included in that 40 days because Sunday is the Lord's Day, always a day to celebrate the resurrection, even within the somber season of Lent. So when uh, some Christians choose to do something special during Lent, um, a lot of times we hear people uh, giving something up, maybe you have done this before, maybe giving up chocolate or social media or Netflix or something that they feel they've been overindulging in, probably. And other people choose to take up something new during Lent, maybe reading a book that will inspire them or starting a new exercise routine or a new prayer practice, something like that. But we remember if we're doing something that we consider to be a little bit sacrificial, that um, Sundays, you should take a break from it because Sundays are a day to celebrate the resurrection. So this week, I invite you to think a little bit more about your physical well-being. Sometimes we have a tendency to kind of separate out our physical well-being from our spiritual well-being. And to some extent, I think that that is actually right, and I'll try to explain what I mean. We should embrace the fact that each of us is a beloved child of God, just as Jesus was called a beloved child of God. That we were created by God, as Psalm 139 said, knitted together in our mother's wombs, beautiful, wonderfully, and fearfully made. And we should never feel that the condition of our physical bodies is something that can separate us from God. We should also never allow voices that we hear around us, voices from social media or advertising or just other people suggesting to us that uh, having a less than perfect body, whatever that means, would make us unworthy in some way. God loves us clearly, just as we are. And we are called to love and embrace ourselves and others in that way as well. So our physical fitness or well-being is not something that should separate us from God. So in, in that way, I think the two have to stay a little bit disconnected. However, we probably all recognize that how we feel physically can sometimes affect us in other ways, can affect us emotionally, socially, maybe even spiritually. Paul told the Corinthian people that their physical bodies were important. Or do you not know, he said, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? We know that these human bodies that we have, this treasure that we have in clay jars, our bodies are frail and fragile. Sometimes we don't realize that, maybe when we're young or if we're really healthy and physically fit, we might kind of take it for granted. But it doesn't take much to help us realize how frail we are an illness or an injury can show that to us. Uh, for myself, I think about the first time I injured my back and at that time was in very good physical condition and pretty young and yet I found all of a sudden my body couldn't do what I wanted it to and couldn't get up the next day. There are a lot of things that we can't control when it comes to our physical bodies. We know that very well. We see that even uh, the person who is in prime physical condition can experience an injury, can experience a terrible illness that they just have no control over. 
But sometimes there are some things that we can control. And I know for myself that things that I can control are what I eat and uh, whether I'm exercising well. And when I do those things, I do tend to feel better and, and have more energy. During this Lenten season, that's something that I am trying to focus on, is taking control of the things that I can control about what I'm doing for my physical health. Trying to eat healthier foods, eat fewer of any foods, and uh, trying to get some more exercise. And, and I know that if I do those things, there will be positive impacts for me. Each of us, of course, is different. Each of us has our own struggles or concerns when it comes to our physical health. What's right for one person isn't going to necessarily be right for another person. Uh, for example, when I, one of the documentaries I watched about fasting was, uh, was talking about how uh, fasting might have some, some positive effects, but also there are some people for whom it's really dangerous, like someone who has, who has ever struggled with an eating disorder should be very careful and probably should avoid trying to do something like fasting. Um, or people who are on certain medications um, should be very careful with that. So it's different for everyone. And usually the best course of action for us is to do something moderate and manageable rather than something extreme. And besides, if we, if we try something, a new extreme exercise routine or diet, um, chances are it's not going to last very long. So. This week, as you journey with Jesus, go out with him into the wilderness. Don't start fasting for 40 days, but go out there and take some time to think about your physical body, that beautiful temple of God, and what small steps you might take to treat your body with the love and care that you deserve. Don't be harsh with yourself in this process. Instead, think about where Jesus started in his process of going out for 40 days in the wilderness. Think about the words that God spoke to him and hear God speaking those words to you as well. You are my child. I love you. With you, I am well pleased. Amen. Our next hymn is Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days. And um, during this, this time when we haven't been able to sing along with the hymns while, while we're in the sanctuary, we've um, been staying seated during the hymns. But we had a worship meeting last Sunday and we wanted to, to try um, standing at least for one of the hymns. So we thought the hymn right after the sermon might be a good one to give you a, a stretch and um, be able to get up a little bit. So if you're able, I invite you to stand for this hymn. <laughs>
be seated. We will now take some time to share our joys and concerns with one another, and I will, uh, I will also take a look at the chat. Um, this, the flowers are decorating the altar this morning are given by Edie and William Scannell in memory of Edie's brother, uh, Maynard Hilton. Did I pronounce the names okay? <laughs> they are beautiful flowers. I put them, if you look on, um, on my computer where, where it says Rebecca, if you're online, you can see those flowers. Laverne uh, asked for continued prayers for Bobby and said that they will be able to see him on Wednesday after many months of not being able to see him. And so we uh, were grateful for that news and continued prayers for Bobby. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Art and Marie said prayers for Marie Hughes' brother, who is in the hospital with a fever. And, well, Art, I guess I, I'm supposed to say this. She, he, he said, also, Marie hit 80 this past week, uh, and she will deny it. Ha ha. <laughs> but he, he put it out there to, the, to, to all of us. So very happy birthday to you, Marie. And I think we have some other birthdays to celebrate as well. One is that it is our very own Dave Shrewsbury's birthday today. He's trying to show himself on. There we go. It, <laughs> Dave's birthday today. And um, I know that, I think it's Fernanda's birthday today as well. I think they're at home. Let's see if I can. I can't see everyone here. I'm just gonna see if I could find them. So happy birthday to you. I, don't, I guess we can't sing happy birthday, but make sure to wish Dave a happy birthday. All right, Bill Aldrich said that we finally have appointments to get vaccinated, so that's wonderful news. And John says, may Ivan M. cope with the loss of his long-term girlfriend. So we keep Ivan in our prayers after that, after that terrible loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. JT says, prayers for Texas and all the individuals affected. May our leaders and the world understand the dangers of climate change. So we continue to pray for all of the people in Texas uh, for whatever struggles they are continuing to deal with there. It's been a terrible ordeal. And uh, a number of people died. I'm not sure I had heard 26 people. I'm not sure if it was probably more than that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Chris and Lori. Uh, pr please pray for our daughter's student, Zach, and his family. Zach's father is on a ventilator due to COVID. And um, the mom and four children can't visit him at this time. That's so hard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Gary emailed me last night uh, to let me know that his brother Alan's surgery went well. Uh, so we're very glad to hear that. Um, it is going to be quite a recovery process, and, and Gary is with him, uh, helping, helping him right now. So continued prayers for Alan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, today is Maya Pay's birthday. She is two years old today. That's from Lady Zoe. Happy birthday, Maya. Are there any others? Yes, Rod. Well, joy this morning. Uh, this afternoon, I'm going to visit Marsha for the first time since September. Oh. <laughs> it, I'm not sure. If, oh, I, I see some clapping. So I think some people were able to hear that. Uh, <laughs> if, if not, um, Rod said he'll, he's going to be able to vi finally visit Marsha after a long time of not seeing her. So, so grateful for that. 
Yes. Lisa offered prayers for a, a co-worker, co-teacher, who uh, ha gave birth to twins. They were premature, and one of them is still in the hospital, and so we pray for, um, for the one who's still in the hospital to come home and, and for everyone to be healthy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, yes, Alex? Yep. Thank, thank you, Alex. He was lifting up prayers for all the people without power and other things like water in Texas. So, yes, we saw a lot on the news this week, um, and we pray for all of the people there. Thank you. Yes, Gail. Um, I'd like to wish Holly a happy 97th birthday this week. I know she's watching. Oh, okay. All right. Let me, I got to see. Uh, Oh, it's hard. I'm trying to scroll through and see. Polly, where are you? I know she's on every Sunday. I'm not seeing her. Okay, Polly, if you're there, we wish you a very happy 97th birthday this, <laughs> this week. Congratulations. Last year, we celebrated her birthday. I think it was on the Shrove Tuesday supper. I think that's where it, when her birthday fell, her 96th birthday. <laughs> uh, yes, Deb. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, Chris Ramona, who was um, from the Camp Valley, she had a master movie from her colon last week. Um, she had cancer in four so this is cancerous again, so hopefully recovery there. My brother Tommy's in rehab up in um, Whitney up in the area. And uh, so now he's dealing with diabetes and all this stuff. So he was getting over insulin the last time he ended up in the hospital. He was getting, they were giving him too much. So now hopefully they will get that down and stuff and they'll do well. And I enjoy that Donnie is going to be going to Keith Tech this week. They're going to do their shop this week. So he's quite thrilled to do Great. And isn't Donnie also going to be celebrating a birthday? Donnie, yes, Donnie and Izzy both. And Izzy is good. going to be celebrating a birthday. I saw it. We've got three, three kids turning 15 this yeah, week. Yeah. Fernanda, Donnie, and Izzy. You know, what's really scary is up in New Hampshire, this father was So prayers for Mona and Tommy and a prayer of joy for Donnie. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, yes, Lisa. Uh, I just forgot to share joy. My, my mom, who you all know, um, just tested positive for COVID just before the new year, but it got out of hospital. She had her first vaccine this past Wednesday. So, Great. Yay. Yes, yay is right. It's a prayer of joy for your mom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, let me check one more time in the chat. Uh, Myrna asked for prayers for those who are unable to worship with us this morning. And prayers for Becky Sarnecki and her family. She lost her father this week. So we pray for Becky and all of her family. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray. This is a prayer mainly by, written by Jin Young Choi, the pastor of North Korean 
North Boston Korean United Methodist Church. Let us pray. God, we meet your son, not in the palace, but in the wilderness. He was vulnerable like us as he stayed in the wilderness for 40 days. He was there in embracing all the challenges or struggles of human life, such as hunger, thirst, fear, insecurity, and anxiety. For your son, each one of these challenges was another name of the beast in the wilderness, which he was asked to encounter. He was driven to cope with those forces that stormed his mind and heart. God, we too encounter our own beast in the wilderness of our lives. Fear drives us to get panicked. Hunger weakens us to feel helpless. Thirst drags us to be impatient. Insecurity dwindles our trust and belief. And anxiety shakes us to lose the balance and the steps of our life. Help us, O oh Lord, to see the angels of light, of courage, and of empowerment. Guide us to weather all the storms in the course of passing the turbulence of pandemic, uncertainty, and helplessness. God of abiding and caring love, you sent the angels into the wilderness when your son went against many spiritual battles. You minded him that he was not alone in the desert journey. As your son encounters your abiding love and care, help us to find your angels who show up when we are tired, hungry, thirsty, and when we are surrounded by the wild beasts of despair and distress. With your help, we can move beyond our time of struggles and frustrations. Help and guide us to take on the courage of preaching the gospel of the vulnerable Jesus who emptied himself for the abundance of God's infinite love. Especially, Lord, we lift up our prayers for those who are sick, those who lost their family members, those who are extremely lonely, those people who are homeless, and many suffering people in Texas. Watch over your people. Comfort them with your presence. And Lord, we continue to pray as Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is time for offering as usual. Please send your financial support to each church to open the table of Christ and the community UMC. And if you are supporting the OTC, you can also go to the website and give electronically. Please rise and let us join together in doxology and the prayer of dedication. Join me in the prayer of dedication. 
Bless these gifts we offer this day. Through these offerings, may the blessings of your Spirit flow to every corner of the world, that all people may know that they are your beloved children. Amen. You see it? Here are some announcements to share for OTC people. Again, our in-person worship service begin on March 7, that's Sunday. Sorry. Next. <laughs> Sorry. Book discussion happens on Thursdays, but it will be changed to, have, to be happening every other week, starting this, this Thursday, February 25, and then March 11. You get the point, right? Every two weeks. Same time at 7 p.m. And re-entry and social gathering on Fridays, every Friday, 7 p.m. And there are committee meetings. Nomination committee meeting on March 9th, it's Tuesday. And SPRC on Tuesday, March 16th. That's 7 p.m. as well. We have a few announcements for Community UMC. Uh, we are continuing to have Sunday school for K through seventh grades following today's service, and that will be happening through Palm Sunday. So we invite any of the kids who are in person to join in person, and you can also join online. And we are also going to have another in-person fellowship time after today's service, so you can go downstairs to the fellowship hall. We just um, ask you to continue to stay distanced, and it will just be a short time, about, about 10 minutes, but at least you can um, chat uh, with each other for a little bit. The stewardship and finance meeting will be at 11.30 this morning, so right after the Sunday school, and um, an online Lenten so-called soup supper on Tuesday at 6 p.m. starting starting this um, that's not right Tuesday no Thursday <laughs> uh, please it's Thursday <laughs> ignore, ignore what it says on there um, Thursday at, at 6 p.m. Um, of course we we can't serve we can't serve you soup online um, but for those who are here in person Deb Hastings said that she made some soup and there is some in the refrigerator, um, some chicken gnocchi soup and beef vegetable soups that, that you can get in the kitchen downstairs. Um, and, and for the rest of you, you're invited to uh, make your own soup. And, but anyway, join us at, at 6 o'clock on Thursday for um, a time of fellowship. And we're going to hear different people from our congregation speaking each, uh, during each of these uh, each of these times, each of these Lenten gatherings. And uh, let me just check and see if there are any other announcements from here in the sanctuary or on the chat. Admin board. Okay, yes, thank you, admin board. Now that is on Tuesday <laughs> at seven o'clock though, right? 7.30. All right, 7.30, Tuesday, admin board. That's Zoom only, right? Zoom only. Okay. All right, if there are no other announcements, then our, our final hymn is Lord of the Dance. And you are invited to hum along if you are, if you are here and you can remain seated.
as we go forth today, remember that your body is a temple and remember how much God loves you, that you are God's beloved child. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.